<laughs> and you said, like, is it working? Like, All right, well, you know what? I expect nothing less. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Desks and Dorks. It's your favorite board game design and creation podcast that brings you the best in indie tabletop gaming. I am Kyle, the dork. I am joined, as always, by my illustrious co-host, the entire store of Let's Play Games and Hobbies, and also Let's Play Games and Hobbies. Riley Parks, the desk. Uh, I would also like to point out that Riley was not recording for what is arguably the best thing that I have ever said in the service of this podcast, and that hell is full of Steven Seagal movies. So if we're going to start off a podcast, it's going to be like that. Well, and that's how we get kicked off of Apple Podcasts. Screw you, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Oddly enough, that keeps us on. Oh, we're good now. <laughs> so, right. l- luckily, Wozniak is still pulling for us from behind the scenes. So, Miles, if I may ask why we're here. Yes, tell us, Miles. Why am um, I here? I'm going to need help moving next weekend. I was just hoping maybe you guys could uh, grab some boxes. Yeah, and... Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Do, All right, I'll bring yeah. my fishing rod. There we go. Uh, no, we are running an event here. Uh, last year, I asked you guys to design board games on the fly. This year, I'm going to go for a more RPG-style route. All right? All right. I've taken 10 strange real headlines from the last couple of years. I'm going to give you that prompt. You're going to have to figure out how to turn that into an RPG hook that your players would enjoy for a variety of different settings. All right. All right. I'm interested. Let us as, as a man who's cut his teeth playing board games like a weirdo, I think I can do this. Also, in honor of Red Panda Redemption, I'll take it. I need a pencil, though. I'll be right back. Oh, we're allowed to take notes? I don't know. I'm taking <laughs> notes. <laughs> You, you want to get me a, nope. something to write on, Kyle? <laughs> no, I want to win. <laughs> no, I'll get you stuff. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, so I've given them a criteria <laughs> just for, give you for, like for, a... for four different things. Um, and they are going to judge you. Don't worry, they're going to just use their point score of one to five in each category just to determine who wins. But the oh, they're only going to get a certain number of points. It's not like if you say they got 20 points in total or whatever, they get those 20 points. That just helps you determine which one of these you like more. So the four categories they're looking at is sticking to the source. That means the headline itself, so you're not uh, diverging too much from what the headline gave you. Some of the headlines might be like something happened in Columbus, Ohio, or whatever. You don't have to use Columbus. Well, that's false because nothing has happened there (laughs) ever. Actually, a lot has happened in Columbus. (laughs) Uh, creativity, so going off in a different direction. So those first two are kind of uh, at odds with each other, sticking to the source and being creative with it. Okay. Uh, System tie-in, because I'm going to have five different systems you can actually pitch in. Uh, you do not want to, you don't have to know specific things, like you don't have to say a 12th level wizard or things like that, but the heart of the system. And I'm going to go over each one and like, what's the idea of each system, okay? I'm going to make a game called 12th level wizard now. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. And finally, personal interest. That's just their own, their own judges. If they heard that while playing an RPG, how interested would they be to go for that storyline? That's it. I love it. So we are the NPCs is what you're telling me right now. No, Absolutely. we're yeah. the end bosses. No, we're the NPCs giving a quest for the end Aren't bosses. they giving us a quest? Uh, yes and no. The quest is to make a game, I thought. After I show you guys the headline, you're going to have a minute each to come up with oh. some idea, okay? During that time, I'm going to go over to the judges, and you guys are actually going to be ranking the 12 base classes for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. <laughs> and I will give you, you guys each have in front of you uh, a plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, which would move it up in the ranks, a minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. The 1s you can use infinitely. The twos, you only get two uses, and then the threes, you each get one use for the whole thing. All right? So this is for the Pathfinder thing. Yes, that's for the, pa- yeah, that's for the Pathfinder oh, thing is we organize those, okay? I thought it was for this. I was like, what? Why Miles has decided to combine these two disparate tasks, no one knows. It's because if it's not Pathfinder, it's nothing. Because I mean, as you guys sit there silently thinking for a minute, unless you're talking to yourselves, it's not really interesting. So I wanted to give them something to do so they would not wander off. Uh, Wait, right. being silent was an option? I would. Yeah, I, I assumed we were bantering till we died, but that's besides the point. All right. All right, so we're going to actually do it for the first one for you guys, so it times out directly, okay? So, so the first one, we're going to do a baseline. It's all random. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Number one. So, Monk is your baseline, okay? And it looks like it's going up against the Druid. So, if you wanted to move further up, that would be a plus one. You like the Druid more than the Monk, or a negative one would be uh, less than that. So, you guys have just a couple, we'll say 30 seconds this first time, just to discuss... You guys can try to convince each other, okay? And all I will right. always apply the negatives this first. Is, so uh, if somebody plays a negative three, it'll just go over here, and then all the positives. So it's better, it's beneficial 
for the positive. So this is uncharted territory for game design. We're going to comment on this like it's a We are, we are. If you notice right now, we have to, we actually have Matthew Og over in the corner there already choosing his number banned, before the others have even banned looked. Banned by the Geneva Convention in six Every countries. Board. Yes, and yet thankfully not in the United States. That oh, that's is not a shocking. surprise. Not shocking at all if you met the United States. Oh, oh, oh. In a weird turn of events, Jeremy has actually only chosen plus one because that's not what Matt chose. That's, that's smart. It's a smart move it's on his It's a smart part. call. Counter As I was act. saying earlier, this is uncharted ter- This is uncharted territory for game design, but luckily we're the Lewis and Clark of bad takes oh. on uncharted game design. I've only found bad taste in my life when it comes to making games. <laughs> this makes Brenton our Sacagawea, which honestly is the most fitting thing ever. A positive... A plus two. Oh, oh, oh! There was a plus two. All right. So the druid is. Oh, being the de- druid, druid is currently is being discussed. Let's go to it. Oh, oh! We are now in Kyle. All right. We're okay. In. So the systems up here, I've grouped them together. A uh, two for system, and they're very similar. So you have D and D and Pathfinder, Cyberpunk and Shadowrun, Shadow Run. Call of Cthulhu and Dracula dossier, Mutants and Masterminds and Masks, Feng Shui and. Uh, big eyes, small mouth. I'm going to go through each of these just so you have a vague idea of what they are. As we in the business would like to say, weeb stuff uh, <laughs> for that last one. So D&D and Pathfinder is your classic yeah. medieval fantasy. This should be the thing everyone's most familiar with. Uh, various classes, paladin, wizard, cleric, D&D is Destin fact, Dorks, right? Yeah, D&D is here. Destin Dorks, I think. A focus on casting spells and fighting fantasy creatures. Okay. Cyberpunk and Shadowrun is a futuristic setting full of advanced tech. Mm. Can be full of sci-fi, uh, full sci-fi such as cyberpunk or a mashup of some fantasy elements. Shadowrun has a corporation ran by a dragon. I, I don't know if they're embezzling or not. Jeff Bezos. There you go, yep. It has a focus on advanced technology hacking in a digital world you can go into. Call of Cthulhu and Dracula Dossier are set during more modern times, the 1900s and up. Uh... A, it's set in the real world with a veil hiding the truths beyond. So you guys are set in the real world. You can use th- things like that. But there's weird creatures, whether it's detectives versus old gods or Jason Bourne versus Dracula. Mm. And if you've never heard, I've never heard anything more better that uh, more better than Jason Bourne versus Dracula. That immediately makes me want to go. I want to play that. I mean, yeah. it's not Liam Neeson's character in Taken. But. No, wow. Well. This has a focus on detective work and uncovering my- mysteries, oftentimes to supernatural creatures. Okay. okay. Mutants and Masterminds and Masks are both modern superhero settings. Either a uh, breakdown of every possible power, which is Mutants and Masterminds, or leaning on teenage heroes and their emotional ties, such as masks. Mm. They focus on superpowered people, often in the spotlight, uh, figuring out how to use their powers to solve problems as well as work together. So the big difference there is, like, all the other ones, you're generally not well-known. Whereas in this, the char- your characters are well-known people out there. Okay. And then Feng Shui and Big Eye Small Mouth are tying action and comedy together with Asian-inspired elements. Feng Shui brings Jackie Chan-like elements, uh, and whereas, oh, with supernatural, magical girl characters, for anyone who knows that stuff, like... Sailor oh, Moon? Oh, Sailor Moon. I was thinking Madoka Magica, but all right. Oh, oh, oh wow, Perfect. you're going deep. And then Big Eye Small Mouth lets you make any kind of anime character you like. So this is a focus on bringing Asian cinema and TV into your action comedy stories. All right. Oh, no. Let's go back. Are you ready for headline one? I as ready as I'll ever be, Miles. I, here we go. So born ready. Italian artist sells invisible sculptures for real money. Okay, so seriously, can we pick what system or are you guys picking a system? Oh, that sorry. was not made I clear. Probably, I should probably yes. justify that. Yes. Because if I have to talk ah. if I have to talk about a, a big actually now I really want to make an anime girl anime about an invisible whatever. So just just pitch, talk talk to me. Talk you to can me. pitch for any of these. The first person, let's say let's say uh Riley pitches for D and D. And then you pitch for Cyber Run, uh, Cyberpunk and Shadow Runs. Sure. If you win, you'll get the three points. And now three points is locked off. So next time anyone pitches for Cyberpunk, they'll get two points. Okay. So you'll okay. Want it, it, insp- it wants you to jump around. So you can only win in any of these uh, up to three times. What's the rules? We're not telling each other which until it's, we start pitching, I assume? Yep, no. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming that's like House of Pain jump around or, or no? Yes. Yeah. The song. Yeah, okay. Up, all right. Up, all right. All right. There's, all right. Thank you. There's, there's like one person in the audience that was singing that with me, and I want to thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Thank so you for your support. Italian artist sells invisible sculptures for real money. So do you go for the easy, obvious route? Oh, okay. I know which system to pitch it in. Or do you get some more creative stuff? So that's up to you guys. You have a minute. All right. All right. For you guys, the next one. Wait, we're not recording for the monk as well to see how they do. Monk just was his, was the baseline. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So three. Uh, Paladin. All right, you guys can argue amongst yourselves for a minute. Go Paladins ahead. are actually super awesome. Yeah, Everyone is pretty yeah. easy. Uh, they, 
got their nice connections to their deities and everything, and uh, as everyone knows, uh, Sobek makes the best paladins. They're like, so. they're like fighters, but more in every single way. As always, Matt is leading the pack as far oh, as the Pathfinder also, rating. You know, it's always crazy to see that. You know, Matt actually was actually snubbed for a spot in the Beijing Pathfinder Olympics, actually beaten out by three-leg Johnny okay. from New Jersey. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Not what we expected. Not what we expected. Here, basically, uh, it would go one spot. There you go. Howard is in the lead right now. Yeah. Uh, are you working down how many points each of them has? No. No, no. It's, uh, the points we're, are how much is moving. We're oh. constantly ranking against what's already up there. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So if you want to strike out, instead of using your number twos, don't count those, because no one should be using twos yet. Oh. So that's okay. Don't, care, don't count. <laughs> All right, I think, well, I think your minute is up here, yeah, people. Because there was a couple of negative ones. So, yeah. let's see. Uh, Riley, you can go first. What, uh, how, how are you going to do Italian artist sells invisible sculptures? All right, so just to confirm this, we are doing adventure hooks. Yes. As in explaining... Well, role-playing game Yeah, role-playing right? game so, hooks, uh, correct. Yeah, yeah. Interest them. How would that yes. be inspired to Sell them on this. Do, like, oh, well, simple. Um, so... And then tell us the system you're pitching in, and then the idea. We are pitching in masks, uh, because if you don't like emotional teen angst, I don't know what's wrong with you, all right? So as, as we are want to do at 12 o'clock on a Monday afternoon, uh, pro approximately a Thursday, I would argue, in the middle of September, we are currently in a class discussing mm -hmm. art. Uh, when bringing up, did you guys hear about Fintego da Vinci? The newest artist selling these on eBay, based right down the road. They say that he's selling invisible items, invisible art pieces even, and not only that, but that he's never actually delivered upon them, but you can't argue with it one way or the other. <laughs> what do you guys think about that, team? I, I, is that is that okay? Are you guys okay with that? Let's start this debate team class. So it's the teen Titans my fight hook. eBay scammers. Yeah, 100%. I feel like I did a better job selling your game than you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. 100%. 100%. Oh, right. Uh, okay, so I actually chose Call of Cthulhu and the Dracula uh -oh. dossier, uh, and so the campaign that I'm, or the role-playing game that I'm calling this is the Legacy of Grey, uh, so the characters are all descendants of the original portrait artist Man, who made Dorian Gray's painting, um, and their idea is that they are attempting to uh, somehow surpass that original masterpiece in order to escape the actual eldritch demonic pact they have made with the still immortal, still a giant jerk, uh, Dorian Gray. So essentially every one of them is a struggling artist attempting to out-art one another to satisfy an eldritch deity. And at the end of your game, only one of you is going to live uh, and then that person actually becomes uh, the character of Dorian Gray the next time that you play the game. So that is wow. my... I went NPC so, hat, you went straight up artist of a RPG. Yeah, not, not, so Riley had a hook and then Kyle was like, here's a whole campaign. Yep, that's the game. All right. There you so go. You can, just, you can use that however score you want. Then you're just going to vote one way or that. You're not going to say how many points oh, they got. Yeah. I would like to point out that uh, one of them listened to the prompt. <laughs> All right. Please uh, note I will be taking half of Riley's wait, score wait, wait. if he wins this. No, you will not. <laughs> so basically, you can just use a one to five scale. How much I refuse to share. That's fair. That's fair. I've not shared with much in life. Just, but I'll share my fish rod. Yeah. Like, like that point. Need a Kyle and I'm ready. I don't even care if I win. I have this fish. I have a bunch of dry erase cards. All right. So I would like to point out for all the fans at home that Miles said this was a hook competition. So I made a fishing rod. Yes, Riley has in what I can only describe CPC. as the most paper like demented moonshine runner sort of way of doing things. But it's a PVC thing and what looks like soldered on... What did you do? I hot or I, I super glued paper clips as my little uh, rod, ho my uh, line holders. Yep. I used leather twine so it will maintain stability in water and also strength and force. This is the <laughs> strength and force, the ultimate in crafting materials. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, sorry. Oh no, no, no! no. Continue. Oh, uh, Nate, which one do you go for? All right. So you just have you to get, say the name. Should I get a reason or just the name? Uh, if you if you want to say something in particular you like. All right. So. Riley uh, stuck to the headline. That's now, true. However, I'm a sucker for Eldridge yeah. things. Ooh, I'm sorry, point. so I'm voting for Kyle. Okay, one vote for Kyle. <laughs> and not for, it's not reverse nepotism. That's fair. Next one. I will also point out that Riley stuck to the headline he a little did. better, but I like Kyle's idea of a bunch of artists just like really just trying to just live by through their art, like not die from the Eldridge. 
All right, so that's a vote for Kyle. Vote for Kyle. All right, so unless Riley runs it here, it looks like Kyle's going to have an early lead. That's okay. All right. I love you. Um, agreeing love you with too. everyone else, you did stick a little bit more to the headline. However, <laughs> as someone with a lot of artist friends, I feel like that would be a lot funner. I, I'll, would be, I'll a lot be honest, funner. I made this solely because I have friends that are all starving artists, and I yes. really want to play it with one, because one of them has an ab- like a half-abandoned loft apartment that they can barely afford, and I was like, I really want to play it in that, and just bask in the sadness. So, fair point, fair point. Yeah. Yeah. What? I agree, but I actually vote opposite. I give it to Ooh. Riley, because I think that Kyle's does sound like an interesting concept, but Riley stuck to the premise, and I think that... Okay. We can't so what, what, what we're hearing is Riley did the job that was asked, but I don't care. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, right? That's okay. <laughs> Much the same, I agree. Riley deserves this one because he took the concept given and went in the correct direction as opposed to something completely off script. I feel loved. Thank you. Okay. You should. Well, I lost, but I did not get shut out. Kyle was going to take this one. That was for Call of Cthulhu, Thank correct? you. Thank you. Yep. Yes, for or whatever else you want to call it. Dracula dossier. Looks like the dork is taking the... Oh, oh there are oh, custom oh, things? Oh, That's oh, amazing. Oh, I can't oh, wait to see what the desk looks like right now. <laughs> it's a rich mahogany. <laughs> oh. All right, headline number two. All right. Wait, so just to clarify before we go to that point, though. I'm not going to look at the prompt. Are we trying to do hooks I guess campaign, however we feel it. I guess either way is fine. Okay. Whichever way makes sense to it. Okay. It works for me. Okay, headline two. An ancient Buddha statue acquired by the Nazis in World War II was carved into an 8th or 10th century uh, from an iron meteorite that fell in Siberia-Mongolia borders 10,000 years ago. There's a lot there. Amazing. Okay, and we'll go. All right. Sorcerer is up next, guys. It is right above the druid. So if you give him a plus one, it'll be right here. Plus two will be over here. So whatever the total is. Uh, I think that sorcerer uh, deserves just like a minus one only. So we need to work together. Uh, what about like a, what about we just give it like? I, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, so like, I'll, I'll I think plus I like one, it, you'll minus one. I like it no. more. I like it more. Than, I like it more than the monk, the less than the druid. Wait a minute. I, 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 I like it more. Oh, that's a plus. I get it. I like. Yeah, I agree. I like it more than the monk, but less Whoa. than the druid. Alright, so Whoa, what do we got? Oh. <laughs> That's not. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> this needs to be a minus one. Okay, so we have two minuses, so it goes boop, boop. And then we have, what, plus four? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, boop, boop. That's not better than that. That's the way it works. Sorcerer's down the best. I believe that's our minute. <laughs> and we're at 55 seconds. You have to have Oh, okay, five more seconds? What? Yeah. And four. done. <laughs> so let's hear. I uh, will start with Kyle first. Start with Kyle this one. Sure. Uh, so I set this in the modern Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I actually wanted to set this in Fifth Edition uh, because I actually feel like this rule set is good for something. Um, wow. And that is a I can't even play D and D five E right. Let's go. And this is a modern version of D and D. So you will actually be using firearms and D and D classes within the D and D rule set. Uh, so it's called uh, Quest for the Meteorite Cross. Uh, instead of an iron cross, it sees the players as a group of special ops soldiers uh, working for the OSS, which is the precursor to the CIA that was formed during World War II, uh, embarking on an Indiana Jones-style adventure uh, in a world that looks kind of like ours, but just think World War II with Dragonborns, um, and basically embarking on this adventure to recapture this meteorite Buddha uh, from a Nazi art collector who may or may not be more than they seem. Mind flare. Um... <laughs> And that's it. That's my adventure. I also put Nazi magic and then just yeah. underline that, which is not a phrase I ever thought I'd say on this podcast, but you know what? Here we are. So it is hard that. to top Nazi magic. It is very hard to top that. But do you know what, Ken? Friendship? Time traveling dwarves no, via the world bad. of Shadowrun. Oh, okay. So now then, you are a group of ragtag hood rats living in the Shadowrun world. You've recently found a headline along with a previously unannounced time traveler teleporter um and your goal is a treasure hunt of sorts to recover this statue made of precious meteorite that was landed somewhere in the ballpark of and now in this timeline thirteen thousand years ago and you will be traveling through time between world war ii world war one going between germany going between back in the good old bce days trying to find what the uh, prized maker 
of this statue was to learn why and how. Okay, here we go. We'll start from the other side of the table this time. Uh, <laughs> well, that without question. Uh, as it turns out, uh, this one I also believe should go to Riley because Ooh. time traveling dwarves seems to tie rather well in with the system. Because Kyle, you have me everywhere except for the system tie-in and the, and the personal interest just kind of delved a little bit. Uh, I feel like the system probably could have been better chosen or married to the idea. Okay. I don't ever want to hear about sticking to the prompt again, though. you, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> I actually agree quite a bit with Matt on that one. I, I like the idea, but Riley had me at Time Traveling Doors. I just, that's, that's all you did. I'm not going to say that I was, took one from Kyle's so, book. So. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You're okay with Riley when he's off theme, but not me. I'm just going that out there. Okay. That's all right. that line. Okay. All right. All right. Looks like Riley might do it. Let's see. I Let's see. really hate the fact I'm in the middle at this point because I've been the tiebreaker each time. I have, I have to give it to Riley. I'm oh. Time traveling dwarves. All right. <laughs> the time all right. And then quickly. Let's see which one did you go. I want to point out that I think they both stuck to the script, but I'm going to give this one to Riley. Oh, 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 wow. Time traveling dwarves took it. That's I, all man. you had to say. There's three Shatter Run is the only thing that I know. Go no, on, Nate. So, is it time traveling dwarves? Nazi my players are great. Time traveling dwarves. Yeah, it's time traveling Right. Clean so what we've heard, though, is that the, you don't actually care about the headline. I stuck right. to the headline. Just, no, just no, as no, much as you no, did. no, no, no. I just want to point this right? out. It was Cyberpunk Shadowrun. One. Oh, man, that is oh, legit a mahogany desk. That is mahogany desk. <laughs> That's mahogany. That is rich mahogany. All right, we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> we have a lot of, well, oh. Number three, Oklahoma State lawmaker introduces Bigfoot hunting season bill. I'm sorry, what? I think season bill actually the, the local. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks I'm like cleric is up. I hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> if I win with this, I'm gonna be ashamed. You're going to. That's the thing I'm I hate the most. Deeply ashamed of myself. Yeah, I kind of do. Now. If, if yeah, we get to the sorcerer, so I coordinate. Agree. You're like plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. Yeah, see now I'm with you on this one. I'm trying see, to like, okay, it okay, out. here we go. Nate, you do a <laughs> minus two. They're actually working together. I did not expect this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm minus two. Plus one. Right, so now, good. and then Ellie's plus one. Oh, I'm a plus one. Right. Minus one. I was going to do a minus one, and then I'm like, wait, foot bunk. <laughs> and plus one. So now All we right. should be staying exactly where we're at. Actually, yeah, no, that'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's a good spot for it. Yeah. Cord, yep. So it just moved right down. Yeah. All right, five more seconds. So We're really not getting that. 55 seconds yeah. on this. Yeah. Really All right, really that's it. That I know. I know. So I'm going to Riley first. Let's see it. All right, imagine this. It is actually currently somewhere in the year of, I don't remember exactly what year Oklahoma was founded, but I know it was before 1937. So the year is 1937. You're all in a small town meeting called by our good local lawmaker in the town of Oklahoma. Not the state, the town. That is all that matters here. Picture this. It's Call of Cthulhu themed. You are all ragtag private investigators trying to make a living. And not only that, but you all have rifles and really enjoy deer hunting. But this year, it is not deer hunting season. It's Bigfoot. You must find the appearance of this potential eldritch horror and why all of the children in the town are going missing one by one. Go. I, I, I will admit, I do not like the slander that Bigfoot was put upon there. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll fair point, fair point. Hear me out. Time traveling dwarves? <laughs> <laughs> and that is all Kyle wrote. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so I am actually. <laughs> Because I'm trash as a person. Um, B E S M. I am, I, uh, <laughs> uh, close. Uh, it's big eyes, small mouth. Yeah, B E S M. Uh, yeah. So this game is called Baka Bigfoot. Oh, God. Um, oh, it is a perfect summertime romance. You play as a young, idealistic aide to the Oklahoma State Senate, who must try to spend their summer saving the taciturn but loving. Bigfoot uh, from the recent hunting that has been sort of enacted. Uh, it is a slice of life anime. With uh, deer hunting rifles. Why not? I would vote for oh, that. Oh, we have a question. <laughs> we have a question for the judges, yes? Uh, is it an RPG or a visual novel? <laughs> <laughs> is it Doki Doki Literature Club is the question. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to... As everyone... Uh, we're going to start in the middle. We're going to make you happy here this time. So yeah. You, uh, not tiebreakers. Kyle. You know I'm... 
freaking weave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Riley, I'll admit, it's it's kind of good. I would vote like, for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have me it's so It's kind of good. <laughs> was, Honestly, you did your job. That. that was the most I followed Midwestern the headline thing. <laughs> that wasn't good at all. Bless my heart indeed. <laughs> You oh, vocalized things. <laughs> but, yeah, no, Kyle, um, I'm, I'm hoping to end up dating Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm also going to give it to Kyle. I thought that was kind of like, humorous. Thank, thank you. 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 So this is, this is the closest one that it's been for, the, for all of them, but like I'm looking at the point spread. I can't wait it just, Overall, Riley sticks more to the thing he's going for, and also it's not a visual novel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Believe it or not, the youngest one on the panel did not go for anime. The times are changing, folks. <laughs> the times they are are changing. People are just what we got here. Uh, many similar notes to Nate. It was very close for me. In fact, I added up the point totals I gave each of you, and it was 12 to 13. Uh, I think the more widely accepted idea would be Kyle's pitch. But it lost out on personal interest to me to Riley's idea. Oh, oh. I so two for two. Really? What do you got? Yeah. Notice me, Bigfoot Senpai. Good job, Kyle. You earned it. Notice me, Bigfoot Senpai. That's not the title of this episode that I'm done. I quit the podcast. If you remember it, we'll use it. I'm writing it down. <laughs> All right. So number four, I believe we're at. Oh my yeah. God. Oklahoma man Oklahoma. again. Oklahoma man driving stolen vehicle caught with rattlesnake, uranium, whiskey, and firearm. What is Riley Parks? Yeah, I was, I, I was, I was, I was, I, was I, I feel, I feel robbed here. Fighter, generic fighter. Oh, easy. All the minuses I want to see. I'm like, no, 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 you know what? They're better than mine. So yeah. No, no, they really aren't. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's what you got. We only we have uh, ten more seconds here. You guys can finish up. Uh oh, we were too quick. Yeah. Everybody this is unusual. That is so <laughs> untrue. Fighters are good at what they do. No. No. Which is no, living. That's not even true. Usually oh, paying the bills. It's, it's like if you want to play barbarian, but you don't want to. Kyle, what play do you got? Well. Yeah. All right. So I gotta. I, I gotta redeem myself at least a little bit in the Shadow Run uh, side of things. So, allow me to pitch to you Trailer Parks Boys, um, which is a Shadow Run game. I feel like my name is oh, in it that. Absolutely <laughs> is. Um, a, where you and your party are recruited by a cyborg named Riley Parks um, and a ghost thief named Randy Parks uh, who have been living their immortal lives ferrying rattlesnakes with uh, <laughs> uranium whiskey and firearms in the irradiated and possibly dragon-infested Oklahoma wasteland. Uh, I have here that it is Mad Max meets Smokey and the Bandit. Um, and the year is 2022. Yes. Okay. I am the truck. <laughs> <laughs> my soul exists in the truck. No. Please tell me that your head is actually the engine. Yes, absolutely. The engine you block. Just open up the the bay and you start talking. I like the va- I open my mouth. It's just valves. Steam pours out. We're getting into some. This is maybe maybe this is a Cthulhu game. No, no, that's what we got. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I actually went mutants and mastermind because Uh-oh. if the dreaded glowing okra is not a terrifying villain that is on the run right now, that you must stop from destroying all towns caught in his path in a uranium fueled nuclear nightmare. I don't know what is. You and your team must band together. Preferably finding giant robots. Maybe this is some Power Ranger vibes in there, too. Um, and you need to stop this man who just steals vehicles. He just hops out, grabs another one. Rattlesnakes with uranium whiskey glasses in their mouth with a gun on their tail are just popping up out of the seats. 
trying to take you guys down. Can you handle it? This is like a Jenga tower of more ideas. And Riley's like, if I just keep stuffing more <laughs> stuff on top of other stuff, I have something to say here, but I know if I say it, I'm going to give this to you. And I'm gonna say give, it. No, absolutely it. not. No, no, no. Uh -uh, I'm saying say it, it after. afterwards. I'm saying it after because there's one way you could sell me We're on this. Start here, since you were the tavern last time. I gotta give it to Kyle. I, I like the idea. It, it fits the it fits the brief and fits the lore. Yeah, I would agree. Thank you. It's a good right. one. I really just want to draw a stat block for you. I'm That's really. Give it to Riley. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh. Thank you. It, it was a Jenga stack, but it was a very oh. Um, <laughs> it was a very hilarious Jenga stack. I'm gonna give this one to Riley. I really oh, like the whole man. stop Oklahoma man from the, <laughs> <laughs> the glow, the dreaded glowing okra. Yeah. <laughs> so, the name. so in sticking to headline, creative directions, and system tie-in, I find them all equal because I think they okay. they oh. like in each well, in their own ways they each tie to it. So it comes down to personal interest. Interesting. And come on, like. I would have stopped the Oklahoma man. <laughs> Damn. Riley's I mean, you're wrong, because Robot Riley's the best, but I mean, that's Ooh. fine. I just find it very funny, and I want to do it. Damn. All right, and what, what, who did you go for? In a rare turn of events, for the first time ever, I think Kyle deserves this yeah. one. I mean, I, I deserve all of them. I really, wow. the personal <laughs> interest for that, once helped me. Yeah. Man. All right, so it was Riley with mutants, right? Yep. Oh. I just want to point out that, like, the one thing I'm thinking about was, like, I need white trash Voltron. <laughs> like, just a bunch of old busted civics and cracked whiskey bottles yeah. assembled together with, by a man named Cletus at the helm yeah. with, like, an old, like, roller coaster cart. I didn't need to say it because they already knew. Yeah. The, <laughs> I think I We're gonna... about Oklahoma Man. Um, is he also an escape convict? No, Nine? all escape convicts. No, he's Have you actually... been to Oklahoma? It's a prison colony. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still here for the it United still States. Is. We've got six headlines in 15 minutes. Let's power through. Oh, let's all do right. it. Boys? Who is this guy? Mysterious portrait hangs outside Chamber of Chief Justice on Massachusetts High Court. So there's some court. They don't know who it is. A cursed one. Rogue this time. Oh, oh. Rogue needs to get up Easy. there. Easy, easy, easy. I don't like rogues. I don't like rogues. What's wrong with you guys? Um, it's the only class I'll actually say that doesn't have spellcasting that I like. I, I'm a heavy spellcast person. They've got, I mean, they've got, they've got their things, but they don't, like, they, they can't hold them against clerics, paladins, right? So we have five, and then we go to plus two. It's not better than paladin. It isn't, but it is better than sorcerer. Yeah. The so can we just swap those two? No, I mean no, the paladin and the sorcerer. Yes. Swap the paladin and the sorcerer. I, I think, think that puts me on everybody. Yes. There right. we go. Yeah. Much paladin. better. Paladin's guard. All right, we have five more seconds. How do you keep doing that? I think you mean how do we keep doing it? All right, yeah. that's it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, well, you're all tied up, so I don't have anybody to go. Uh, let's go for Riley this time. Okay, all right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use the weeb category today. Okay. Uh, because we all know that the Massachusetts highest court is actually the homecoming court. And so, of course, we are currently at homecoming night. And a group of high school students are exploring around a little bit um, at this beautiful venue, dancing, partying the night away, when they come across the most, most magical of pictures. And the most magical of people inside that picture beckoning them and calling them. So the entire game is you trying to find the identity. It is not a visual novel for the record. But you are going around kind of talking to those around you as opposed to solving conflict by violence. You're solving it with violence and with talking with people the way it should be. Getting answers to find who the homecoming king will be. Yes, <laughs> maybe. So, so Persona it is. So, so it is a visual novel. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Persona has left and right movement, not just straight. Persona ahead. is a visual novel with Pokemon. You can all fight me about it. <laughs> Miss my Pokemon. Uh, I also went with the weeb category. Oh. Uh, actually. Uh, and this is you're more of a weeb than me. I'm scared. So I, I actually didn't choose uh, big eyes, small mouth though. I chose feng shui or feng shui. I can't feng shui. Feng shui. Thank you. Okay, good. Miles is spelling. Notwithstanding, uh, that's how it's spelled. Is that how it's spelled? Yeah, okay, absolutely. All right, I have reason to be that's fair. Be, be skeptical. Uh, so this is actually a group that I call, or a game that I call, Mass Iv Slaughter. Um, a group of middle-aged civil servants who are all retired kung fu masters uh, must investigate the strange portrait hanging outside of their office. In this game, 
inspired by Kung Fu Hustle and movies like it, uh, you must balance your hidden past as a Shaolin master warrior or other martial arts discipline and your responsibilities as a 45-year-old Massachusetts father. Um, Can you balance soccer practice and a duel to the death? Will you be able to get Rebecca to her prom dress fitting in time and still have a nunchuck fight in a parking garage outside of a Duncan. It's up to you to decide. Without having a black eye for the pictures. Man, that's going to be tough. Without having a black eye for the pictures, dude. You can't. Dude, if you do that again, like, your wife's going to leave you. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be real tough. It's going to be real tough. All right, we're going to start here. Okay, I'm going to give this one to Kyle. I thought the creativity of balancing your kind of midlife crisis, if you want to call it that, I like that. Thank you. It's good for me. So I, yes. I'm a, I'm a big fan of how you like, t- uh, Kyle. I'm a big fan of how you tied it into the system. Um, Riley, like overall, like very, you did a very good job. But like, Kyle just excelled in the system tie and personal interest for me because I'm just, a, I'm a sucker for games that are just like balance, like balance of like doing cool stuff and also <coughs> doing stupid mundane stuff like mm-hmm. taxes. I would say that's yeah. amazing. Oh, let's not talk about taxes. All right, it is stupid and mundane though. Riley, your your headline sticking was excellent. Your system tie-in seemed amazing. Uh, I am not interested in this game. <laughs> I'll accept that. Even so, it was still pretty close. Kyle, yeah. your your the personal interest was up there. I mean, and Feng Shui is a pretty interesting game. Uh, so I I am giving my my oh. vote for you. All right, all right. Let's do the last two quick. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree again that Riley had it tied in better, but I I want to play Kyle's game where it sounds more interesting. Um, Man. Riley, definitely yeah. stick to the headline, but um, I would roll, make that a game. All right, well, that's, that's the next test. Oh, right. Is that going to be the next mini micro I, RPG I, for I, desks? Oh, notes? absolutely. I ran out of time to pitch it, but like in my head, all I could picture is a guy whose name is Tom, and his nunchucks are literally two fanny packs strapped together, and he's go four fanny packs. It's in Massachusetts, just, not Florida. Uh, d- or uh, have you been to Massachusetts? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the fanny packs there. It's, it's very white suburban bad. Oh, it is. Let's see number six. Meet the residents of a Norwegian island who want to kill time. Literally. Oh, <laughs> oh. I like this one already. I, I don't ah, want to read this you one. You better answer correctly here. We've got the bard. All right. Yeah, uh, that's pretty easy. So one. where's all our plus threes? That's what I want to hear. Dang it. I know where mine is. Plus three. Plus two. Thank goodness. Oh wow, we've got. <gasps> Woo! Like someone has to bounce. Go! Yeah, that part's way up there. He's in the lead right now. I feel like, I feel like both of you wasn't necessary, but okay. Well, <laughs> they're, very, sure it they're, happens. they're very <laughs> passionate about the bard. Listen, bards own my part. We know who we stand for. They own a we're, lot of bards. That's their whole thing. Sometimes you want to play around without it having is. like 8,000 prison rules, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 15 more seconds. Everyone decided very quickly the bard, and that's what I wanted to see. Uh, that's only because witch isn't there. So <laughs> I feel like bards get a lot of slack, but in reality, they're a really great class. Would we be kicked out of the store if you, like, all Almost the minus three witches? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's better. Oh, I haven't used that. And that's it. That's time. Right. I haven't used Okay, I feel really good about this one. Uh, you should have felt really good about the last one. Oh, uh, the last one! I, the last one I would have been upset if I lost. I'm there is no I'm way not, you I'm not gonna. gonna li- a, I'm not gonna lie to yeah. you. I, that, I deserve uh, to get shut down on that one. That was great. Yeah. That, All right. Uh, I think uh, Kyle will be pitching first. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to D and D again because I'm. I'll be darned Ooh. if I let that that white whale break me. Um. So this is actually a D and D campaign where you and your characters are literally attempting to kill time, and I don't mean a god of time, a monster of time, but time itself uh, as a physical personified force. Um, however. As opposed to a regular game of Dungeons and Dragons, to sort of experiment a little bit with the system, um, you're all the residents of this tightly knit knit village. All of you, however, are heroes who have retired from a successful life of adventuring. You begin the game at fifteenth level. As the game progresses, you do not gain levels, but as time slowly takes your abilities, you lose levels. The closer and closer you get to your goal, this campaign is entirely a match of will you be able to get to time and kill it uh, before it strips you of your powers, your abilities, uh, and the things that made you the incredible adventurer that you were. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Riley. Okay, so... Kyle yeah, that's now, real right? deep. <laughs> that's real deep. That's real deep. Wow, okay. Now, <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna throw out... 
Did you happen to just retheme uh, uh, your rain game? After, yeah. The, <laughs> no. The rain. The, the, uh, after, after the rain, rain is after very rain. exciting, but it is more centered on memory rather than time. So I actually would be, I would argue this would be, at least for me as a designer, it would be a completely different rules right. Okay. Um, and in fact, because you have to still be somehow efficient in combat, but uh, despite losing your powers. So I think that actually also would change how people build their characters. Like, okay. Okay. you can't just sheer optimize anymore. Which I also think would be really interesting and lend to some cool character building and role-playing moments. I also chose D&D and went the complete opposite route. Um, so, as one does in Dungeons & Dragons, you are a party of murder hobos who have ran out of those around you that you can kill while being sensible. Okay. So, you turn small time. You start killing watches and clocks, slowly working your way up to taking down the giant clock tower in town and unleashing the demon you must slay. I can't, I can't beat Kyle. That's uh, all I got. Yeah, I, yeah that's I, real I, tough. I, I love you. That's I'm real sorry. tough. I'm just going to just who? speed it up. Uh, uh, who voted for Kyle? Everyone. Uh, that's, that's a full hand. All right. I'll give that one. Yeah. Uh, that was a and that was the first D&D. I love you dearly, but like I no, was you really, really one. ticked off that I lost the first D&D one. I'm like, I'm coming back for that system. Headline Fight me in the street, Gary Gygax's ghost. That's <laughs> very predictable, but still exciting. Yeah. Headline number seven, the oh, poor train. The, po- the, the poor poop, poop train. train. The, train. The, poop the poop train. The poop train's reign of terror in small town Alabama has ended. Did this happen to Dave Matthews Band? <laughs> 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 that was All right. Chicago. That we got the wizard. Poop train. The wizard also deserves a plus two year. Yeah. Uh, well, but not if everybody else is going with it. <laughs> I don't, you I'm gonna like say no. Just above the road, but below the palette. Maybe just above the source. I'm really the sorry, guys. So we have four, five. I mean, it's good, but it's like, it's not the greatest. So we have have three, 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 and it's a plus two then. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like this would be a lot easier to do if we just ranked it on how many points it got as opposed to. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I switched you over to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mine's this room last. Yeah. It looks like ten more seconds. We don't like mine. It doesn't. What did you get here? Riley. Poop, train, poop, train, poop, train. Poop, train. Poop, train. Oh, All right. That's, I really don't want to talk about a poop train, I'm, but I'm we've had. I assume, that when I had this headline, I assumed it was going to be Mutants and Masterminds, because if Poop Train is not a villain, I don't know what it is. It's not Mutants and it's Masterminds. It's not Mutants and Masterminds for me either. I went ahead the Call of Cthulhu route. Son of a gun. Which you also Son did. Son of a gun. Yes, oh. I did. <laughs> I would say that what it, what is more eldritch and strange happenings than the fact that the town that you live in is slowly changing people's mannerisms, how they act, their appearances are shifting under the effects of this gas coming from this train, and your job is to investigate it, find the conductor, and find out how to end it, while well, without succumbing of your own accord to this poop madness. I also went with Call of Cthulhu and Dracula Dossier. So, uh, I, my working title for this is I'm Too Old for This, uh, and then you can uh, insert the expletive of, of, being old. of your mm-hmm. course. Um, no, you you could be whatever age you'd like. So the party is a group of uh, monster hunters, investigators, private investigators, mercenaries, and the like, your standard Call of Cthulhu, Dracula Dossier characters. They are called in to perform a job to rescue... Uh, the town, the small town in Alabama from its poop train, which has now been infused with the soul of an elder god. However, I want to kind of play on the systems because usually in these games, you're trying to kill the elder god and the elder god is your enemy, yada, yada, yada. However, in this instance, uh, the heroes have only one ally in the town that hasn't lost itself completely to the poop train's madness, and that is the soul of the god itself who does not care if it lives or dies. It just wants to not be in a train full of shit. <laughs> and well, thanks for making it so we can no longer air this episode. We can air the episode. We can do it. It's in the middle of the episode. <laughs> this is for the children. Okay. So both of them were pitching for Call of Cthulhu, it sounds like. That's hard. So whose elder story is better? Who did we not start with? I think we started with everybody, right? Better. Now that we're going to go back over here. Yeah. All right. So... I want to deal with like a just a god who's done with them, 
literally everything because his whole existence is in the poop train. His existence is quite literally <laughs> the word that I'm not allowed to say a second time. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we That's how we All right. That was fun. That was personal Sorry. interest. And we're going to go reverse. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Let me give this one to Kyle. The thing that really got me is how we're calling in all these private and guest investigators and stuff just to solve the poop, poop train. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's going to be a runaway games. train here. It was so close. I'm sorry, Kyle. Oh. oh. Go for that outer god poop. Thank you. So, I like Kyle's idea, but I think Riley seems like it would be more interesting to play overall. Because after a while, if you have no other allies, it's going to be a pretty rough go. Okay. And <laughs> as rough as the good news is, range. I don't yeah. have to give an opinion because I was perfectly tied and somebody has already won. Good. Okay. <laughs> fair point, fair point. I'll take All it. right, looks like Kyle's going to take Kyle. Kyle is mm-hmm. more than in the lead at this point. There is. There's a lot of uh, dorks up there, I'll say that. On the what? other hand, the quality of the desks are sh- should be what counts. Yeah. True. All right, headline eight. Man says he's not dead. Court doesn't buy it. <laughs> okay. I swear I'm not dead. Yeah, all right. So that's my gavel. Oh my. <laughs> well, we know this isn't. This has to be. It's Do we though? Oh. Okay. That's Ooh. middle of the line. And you got a decent amount of love in second edition. Y'all don't know it yet, but um, I. Yeah. He's right over there. No, no, no. We balance that out a little bit. Yeah. Alright, so we have a plus four and then a minus one, so a plus three. Boop, I should bounce boop, it out a little bit more. Boop, up. We're growing. Ranger's really looking good now, somehow. Hey, they, Ranger's pretty awesome. I, I don't believe he belongs right above the wizard, but between the wizard and the rogue would have been a little bit better. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Five more seconds. I just would like to point out in my five seconds now that I'm done that Ranger is the class that I want to be the coolest and it never is. And I'm very sad I'm by that. playing Ranger in 5th edition right now? I D&D. have not seen 2nd edition Pathfinder Matt, is there any, uh, is there D&D awesome Ranger. Of the in I don't know if the Did you and I do oh, the same system again? Let's find out. Did you? Uh, Probably. I, I, I did, so... I, okay. Uh, I did. Let's see if I judge by Raleigh's reaction. If we did. I did Mutants and Masterminds. Oh, no, we didn't. Okay. Okay. Um, and so I thought this would be really cool. So a uh, long-thought dead... Or a, uh, so a superhero has long been thought deceased uh, actually returns from a mission, playing on that classic comic book trope. Superman gets sucked through the portal. Omni-Man gets sucked through the portal. Wonder Woman is in Atlantis for whatever reason Wonder Woman's in Atlantis for. She can do whatever she wants. She, she's awesome. Um, they return only to find from their mission only to find that time has passed uh, and people think they are dead, uh, including the courts uh, who rule that the superhero is in fact dead. Yoru are a teen group of superheroes, so I'm going to put this in the masked universe, charged with investigating uh, this hero's career, uh, their interpersonal relationships, uh, and then the newly returned hero themselves to find out if this person is in fact all that they seem or if they are a supervillain trying to take advantage of an opportunity and the reputation of one of your fallen comrades. And I'm going to just put that there. Wow. Powerful one. There's, there's not a dry eye in the house after that one. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I went for cyberpunk, actually. Ooh, okay. I went yep. for the route of one, in, in this one shot, one of you is playing as a previous cyborg fully converted into autonomy of sorts, who is trying to, who went too far, And the courts are now ruling him as no longer a human and no longer a human entity and alive. So he is actually, him and his group of pals and hirees are running around collecting body parts, trying to stitch himself back together in a race against time against the legal system. Can he make it and can he convince the judges he is, in fact, still human with a soul? Okay. And a left leg, potentially. (laughs) That's the goal. I mean, well, he had one, but he doesn't. He he had Actually, metal. No, that's one. not true. We all know the left leg is where the soul is contained. Well, the left leg oh. is how you drive a stick. So, so yeah. Captain Ahab doesn't have a soul. Yeah. It's true. So, yeah. Riley, you had me in the first half, and then you lost me. That's fair. I have to give it to Kyle because that sounds like a really awesome setup. Bam. Uh, Riley, you had me in the first half, and then you kept me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this one goes to Riley. Yeah. Oh, one for one. So this is the highest one I've ever. The highest one I've scored yet with two fives and two fours. Riley, absolutely. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. I really like that one. Cool. Well, Kyle, you had me in the first half, so I'm gonna give this to Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I, you, you deserve that one. That was way cool. I tried to go as deep. No, that was way. No, that was way cool. 
I loved Kyle's. No, and give, then it, I was no like, give it to Riley. Riley That's, uh, do I don't want it. I don't want your vote. Also, like, <laughs> slight abomination vibes, though? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you noticed how I looked at Kyle when I was talking about stitching back oh. together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a reason where I'm, like, I'm, I'm okay with this. Oh, yeah. Two more headlines. Robot praised on Russian state television. Really just a man in a costume. <laughs> it's a life <laughs> like. Oh my god, I'm so excited. The Alchemist. Oh, oh, oh. He needs a solid middle. I've already used these two. I can't yeah, use them I'm anymore. Saying, I, See, if you use the big ones, I, I, it's I hard to get them to the end. Yeah, I, I would have I given four more if I could. Minus three? Yeah. Woo! Nice. Okay, so we, I'm not familiar with the Alchemist, there's, there's but like, if it's anything like an Artificer, why? Yours cancel out, yep. so you have threes. Boop. Boop. Yeah, you guys, you guys aren't looking where it's going to push you. It's such a good class. It's a good class. I mean, it's difficult. I it but it's middle of the road. It's it's difficult, but like even like the fact that it was the second thing I've played in Pathfinder, like it's so I'm so seconds. excited for this one. God darn it. I love this game. Like if you I would I would have And we're done. Okay. Riley, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to start with a simple one-liner, um, and I want you to imagine the Teen Titans fighting the Red Guardian with a cardboard box on his head with little antennae. Uh, so this is ask- actually a masks-based one-shot, uh, where the murder robot that Russians praise as their state and country hero is actually just a elderly retired warfighter uh, who runs around with a bunch of cardboard boxes taped to himself going beep, boop, beep and you must not only defeat him in combat but defeat him in the political sphere as he is also running for president of russia okay took a turn there at the end you had me in the first half um (laughs) i'm good at that i'm not good at keeping uh all I can think of is the reoccurring joke where it's like, do you remember that that one review or interview we did? It was like they come for Riley and they stay for me. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh my god. Um, all right, so I'm 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 so sorry. I'm doing it a third time. No, I'm not sorry at all. I'm doing big eyes, small mouth. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, this is a game called Putin on the Ritz. Oh god. Uh, it is a. I hate it. You it started is a, the pun. You've won. It is a comedy anime of anime game of mistaken identity. So. Uh, your character, or your man, the man character, uh, is deeply indebted to the Russian oligarchy uh, and must pretend to be a robot to prop up the struggling Soviet Union's uh, robotics program for live television appearances. This is complicated when a host of colorful and exciting characters fall in love with him in his robot persona, uh, and he must juggle all of those potential romances and also the withering displeasure of Vladimir Putin. Uh, yes, that's a game mechanic. You have health, sanity, and Putin. <laughs> and it's how that's much he lo- that's how much he wow. loves you or hates you. Okay. Do you start in the middle or do you start on the you hate start category? In, you start kind of a little low on the middle because you you're deeply like a... in debt, but he's like you're kind of useful at this point. Okay, okay. We'll start here at the end. Well, you're gonna have to start somewhere else because at a at lowest score is tied ever. I just don't have an answer yet. Okay, Ooh. we'll give you the most time here. So with the perfect twenty is Kyle. A perfect 20! <laughs> <laughs> it would be you that gives me the perfect 20 for the so I hate the pun. Uh, <laughs> Alright, I liked Riley's, but I like Kyle's a little more, so... Oh, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. It looks I'll like we might do it. Kyle. Yep. The pun sold it for I, me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope if you just said a pun, that's it. You could have been quiet after that. that. <laughs> All right. This notice me, I, Putin senpai. <laughs> I I love the pun, but I, I actually thought Riley's idea was would be more interesting to play. Okay. And that has us at a dead tie. Oh yes, absolutely. So it uh, doesn't matter what I think because Kyle's already won. Uh, how, All right. How have you ever liked any of my games? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we? Are we? This is the last headline. Yep. Here we go. And no BSM or There's Feng no Shui. There's no stopping Toronto's Uber Raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Right here, barbarian. Okay. Let's see some negatives, people. I like this one. What's wrong with you? I. This is my well, least favorite class. Need to see some negatives, people, because otherwise you're just gonna shoot everything positive every oh, time. Okay, I'll, I'll chip in a minute. <laughs> All right, so we have. It's only a plus one. It looks like. So there is our final round. Monk is the worst. 
Fighter, Druid, Cleric, Sorcerer, Rogue, Barbarian, Wizard, Ranger, Alchemist, Paladin, and the best one we all do is the Bard. So, the funny thing about this, I don't think a, a single one of the people who ranked it agrees with that entire I really I like, love the process. I really like that Monk is dead last as it should be. <laughs> Always. Always. Oh, by virtue of it started. Nope. Yeah, no. Nope, I'm okay with that. The two that started are still All right, back. we're done. Let's hear this last pitch. All right. Who's gonna stop the Uber Raccoon? All right, Kyle, let's lead it. Well, we'll find out who's gonna. That's actually just gonna be the name of the game. Is who's gonna stop the Uber Raccoon? Uh, this is mutants and masks, uh, mutants and masterminds, or masks. Uh, you must confront Mr. Stripes, uh, Toronto's favorite petting zoo mascot, who has been given powers uh, through both radiation and mad science by your arch nemesis. However, uh, your superhero team's defeat uh, or possible defeat of Mr. Stripes is complicated by the fact that you have all also been turned into animals. Uh, so it is basically Rescue Rangers meets Justice League over the city of Toronto. So you're the Wonder Pets. You are the Wonder... No, you're the Paw oh. Patrol. Oh, well, you're the, Paw Patrol the Wonder Pets would have won that. I mean... So I'm glad you've corrected I it. love Paw Patrol. Do you not like Paw Patrol? I've never seen it. Oh, it's really nice. Okay, it's like cool. really wholesome, I feel surprisingly. It. Yeah, but that's it. Uh, yeah. Will you stop the Uber raccoon? Wow. In, in the sense of anything that isn't normal, I'm always going to end up going for the Cyberpunk Shadowruns universe. Because how else will you encounter an Uber raccoon that is so doped up that it is running around not only eating out of the trash, eating the trash cans and the State Department buildings, but also using buses as roller skates? I'm not going to lie. Eating the State Department buildings is a whole mood. It, it 100% a whole is a whole mood. mood. That's a whole mood. Whole mood. Can you use physical force, technological force, or maybe just running away force to make it happen? Running away force? <laughs> I think Foot that's power? called cowardice. <laughs> cowardice? Cowardice is a trait. Uh, that's that's my next game is going to be powered by cowardice. That's going to be... Kyle. Oh, Lord. Congratulations. My am... Well, yes. Um, my animal... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my animal loving card got sold by it. I'm going to give it to you. All right, we're gonna go this way. That's right. <laughs> I gotta give it to Kyle. I think that it sounds like a better too. idea. All right, over here this time. I'm gonna give this one to Robin. Oh. Ooh. Shock turn of events. Uh, Thank you. I always liked it. All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> so I was gonna promote most of it, but I think unlike Ellie, you kind of lost me. We were all animals. Like I think I think I prefer being just like a person with superpowers as opposed to interesting. Like, yeah. Although I'm, so, I'm not gonna lie to you, the animals with superpower episode is a time honored. TV trope. That's true. But is it? I don't watch TV. Justice League. I'm gonna uh, one woman gets turned into a pig. I'm gonna have to give oh. this one to Riley. All right, Thank we you. have a two for two. You're gonna break it. I break it. You actually well, have to break this, one. Riley. Congratulations. I do. I do. <laughs> and I actually can because it was not a dead tie like it's been two other times. Um, as as much as I don't want to do it, uh, the points you, don't lie. And they say that Kyle has won this one. Oh, really? Wow. All right, I'll take it. All right, so with the final score, it looks like of 16 to 8. Kyle knows how to hook them. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, sir. thank you, thank you. It's been a pleasure. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know. I'm trying to get the microphone mainly. Um, thank you all to our judges. I'd like to thank the Academy. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> there's no Academy. We are the Academy. We don't have a certification for that. I do. Fair point. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, if you are listening to this episode, whenever we put it out, uh, if Let's Plays uh, two-year anniversary is still happening, please come in and support it won't be. Uh, arguably the best local game store. If it is not happening by the time you uh, look at this episode, please come in and support the best local game store ever anyway. A uh, huge thank you to Miles for putting this game together, for Brenton for allowing us to occupy your space, and hopefully some real estate in your heart. And also a huge thank you to all of our judges uh, for coming out and judging this event. Thank you to all judges. Thank you to all people here. Thank you to all guests. Thank you to our Sacagawea. Yes, Brenton. Brenton Green. Brenton. Brenton Green, our Sacagawea, everybody. All right. Have a nice evening, guys. I've been Riley. I have been Kyle Ott. This has been Desk to Dorks. You've and been this awesome. audio is definitely not usable. Goodbye. It is usable.